السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته اللهم اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي يا دعاة رب السماء يا من صنعتم في الأرض نورا Welcome to the third episode of our podcast Through Her Eyes A platform for young Muslim women to learn from each other, ponder and share life lessons I'm your host Farah, and today I'm here with Tasneem and Maimuna. Assalamualaikum, guys. Um, so we're very excited to kick off our third episode, and today we're going to be talking about a very important topic, which is friendships. So we'll just kick it off with a question: What's like your brief take on friendships, and what's the difference between the friendships you had as a younger kid? And how did they change now? Like, what kind of growth did you see to the friendships you have now? I mean, I guess talking about my friendship. So I grew up in a British neighborhood, but it was very um, non-Muslim. It was, there was a lot of white people and I was a, very much a minority. Um, and I think my friendships have definitely changed, like, as with anyone. But when I was a lot younger, um, I think... I was less discriminant about my friendships. It's more kind of, you know, you're in school with these people. You don't get really to choose them. And that's the main thing in your life. You don't really, especially if you're, you know, second generation immigrant or even first generation, you don't have a lot of family around. They're your close company. Your friends that you take are who are around you. Um, but I also kind of think, um, alhamdulillah, I was kind of blessed in that, strangely, um, I was very kind of open um, with my identity and who I was like as a Muslim, as a Pakistani um, amongst people who are very, very different to me. And I'm the kind of outsider. Um, so I guess <laughs> I didn't really, I, I guess it was, um, I was quite lucky in that um, my friendships didn't really How would you me. say? I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm like panicking. No, how would you say your friendships changed to the ones you have now? Um, and what changed them? I think that's a good question. Um, Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think it's a really important question, actually, because I think, obviously, as you grow older, you do learn. But the one thing I've kind of learned is about friends of convenience and friends by choice. I think when you're younger, you have a lot of friends by convenience because... They're the people who are around you. They're the people, you know, it's easiest to connect with. They're the people you spend the most time with often, especially if you're in, you know, school, high school, college, things like that. Whereas, and even in the first few years of uni, you know, especially if you move away and these are the only people you live with, these are the only people you really spend time with, they're mostly friends of convenience. And then as you get older, I feel like I've learned the value of choosing my friends, um, who is it that I want to be friends with? Who do I want to learn things with? Who teaches me the values that I agree with? Obviously, at the heart of it, as a Muslim, just my personal perspective is that should be Islam. Like, it, kind of how we talked about intentions and stuff. It should be guiding you towards Islam, guiding you towards Allah and that closeness with him, a relationship with the Quran, like all of those kind of values. Um, and not necessarily just what, the identity is if that makes sense yeah so I guess thinking about their character I think that's definitely changed um and also kind of thinking about friendships in a way that give and take the balance of it mm -hmm. me as a person I feel like <laughs> I feel like I was a person who used to give a lot to friendships and I would argue I still kind of do but I give myself to my friends like I would try and like do absolutely everything which not necessarily is a bad thing but this is more of a personal development thing I think more than a friendship thing but knowing where to set boundaries within friendships mm. um so would you say you're expecting to take now like would you say you're expecting to take something from a friendship now mm. compared to how it was before yeah definitely I think it was more about giving when I was younger. Mm -hmm. It was all about kind of supporting and getting that sort of reward of supporting someone and giving them support because I had no support. Um, mm -hmm. But now as I get older, I realize, you know, 
friendships are supposed to be give and take. Mm. You're supposed to receive what you give, you know, um, people who are forgiving, people who are kind, people who allow you to develop yourself, improve yourself. I don't know this name, how it was for you. Um, <laughs> Very smooth transition. <laughs> um, I've definitely gone a long way when it comes to friendships. Um, as a kid, I I was not very popular, and that's a euphemism. Um, I, I was just, um, I was kind of... <laughs> well, let's just say one thing. All of us were nerds in, the school, in our schools. <laughs> no, none of us were like the eight girls. <laughs> so, just like as a disclaimer, <laughs> we were the nerds, like the people yeah. in the front rows of the of our class. Let me say... Great brains think Sorry, alike. Continue. <laughs> no, it's okay. Um, yeah, I was definitely that, you know, nerdy girl in the front row, always her hand up. I'm very, very socially anxious. No, it's it's true, it's true. Um, There's so much that we can resonate with. <laughs> I know. I know. Literally everything you said made me want to believe. I'm like anyways. Um yeah, I was very socially anxious, very shy for a really long period of my time. Um, and I really struggled with my identity being very different from everyone else around me because as quite, kind of similarly to what you said, Maimuna, I grew up in a, in a very secular environment um, where there was no Muslims at all around me. It was generally just me. Um, not just that, but there was also no ethnic diversity around me. I was the only Arab around, um, the only Muslim around. And that a lot of times makes things very um, hard when you're a kid that's or that already stands out by their personality. Um, when your identity adds up to that, that makes it even harder. Um, so I say I was kind of bullied though, I don't know. But basically, yeah, people weren't very nice. <laughs> The way she said that, she's like, side note, I was very, <laughs> side note, I was bullied. <laughs> By the way, um, yeah, let's just say people were very nice. Um, but I think that that really, I think that set me up for later when I grew up, maybe I'd say throughout like preteens and teenager time, really wanting to fit in because having experienced the other side of the spectrum, I knew I didn't want to go through that again. So I really wanted to have friends. Um, but I think I was a bit naive about friendship in the sense that I did not really understand kind of the way that people would socially act, as in act like a play, um, and that they wouldn't necessarily be honest or truthful with you, and that a lot of the times they can be with you not because they like you as a person, but just because you're convenient for me, so I will be friends with you. Um, and obviously that's not necessarily like, that's not at all a friendship that you'd want you'd want to have. Um, yeah, so I think I started having a bit more kind of a, a larger friend circle in high school, um, so maybe like 15, 16, 17. Um, but I think, yeah, again, even though I had larger social circles and I went from being very shy and nerdy to actually a lot of people knowing me and that you know I'd be a school rep and I'd be very active wow. yeah <laughs> I yeah I, I I kind of did the 360 360 or 180 180 yeah because <laughs> you I'm going back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so I kind of did I kind of did a 180 from being very shy very nerdy very socially anxious to um being very active in the school community like being on school boards and going through elections and like knowing a lot of people in the high school. Um, but that doesn't mean that I had meaningful friendships all the time. Um, I think it was a lot, as you said, Maimuna, a lot of give friendships, but not a lot of take, which was, I think a lot of it was also on me. I didn't realize that I could have a bit of the energy from other people, you know what I mean? Um, and the friends I had, like, yeah, again, I didn't have any Muslims around me, so that's the main part of my identity that I couldn't share with anyone. Um, that There was, like, no Muslim community where I was or in my environment at all. So I think that makes has, that has a lot of impact on later when you grow up and you do find that Muslim community who you choose to be your friends because you realise the blessing that it is to have people to, who understand your objective in life um, and when your objective in life is to lead 
and intentionally seek the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you find people who have the same objectives as you, it really helps you into building that journey and building your own self back to, I can do this with people and this is not a lonely journey anymore, but it's a journey that can be done as a community, as a group of friends, as people who love each other for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So alhamdulillah, I'm very grateful for everything I've been through because it genuinely forged me and my personality and identity to be what it is today, to understand how to value friendships and take care of my friends and make sure that I know who is close to my heart because that has a lot of impact on how you think and how you act in your life. And a lot of the times you don't realize that until you get out of a situation or you go back into a situation. Um, um, so yeah, you, re you realize the importance of taking care of your heart and taking care of your relationships because they will impact the state of your heart, undoubtedly. I just wanted to add on that, something that you said made me think of something. Um, you know, you're talking about friendships that helped you kind of develop your Islam and you can develop and grow together. That makes me think about kind of growing up you really, if you're not surrounded by people who accept or give room for that part of your identity, you really don't develop it. Mm. Like that, it just makes me think like, when I think of myself as a Muslim, Alhamdulillah, I, you know, that was always a part of my identity. It was very, very important to me. But when I think about when I started to ve develop it, it wasn't until I started being able to have friends who shared those same values with me that I could oh, develop it. That was literally what I wanted to point out. So from my point of view, it's like, I have grew up in various like situations, but um, looking back at the, like, at the situation I grew up in Germany, I've switched school so many times. And one of the factors were, one of the factors why I did that was because of the people who surrounded me. I never felt like I, I was connecting to those people. I was so basically I was always kind of an outsider. If I look back on the entirety of my school journey, even now in university, like I'm still not finished with the university, even now, I I'm always the outsider. I was always that young person who was either like too religious or like the only one with hijab. I was only the I was always the girl with the hijab. And then I don't know, just like the girl with who wanted to practice, but I what I wanted to get back to the point that you made. Uh, the point that you made. I can't talk today. Um, I wanted to get to the point that you made. It is like when I view myself and I look back. Subhanallah, I find a very big parallel between how much I was practicing and the friendship groups I had. Because during that time, yes, I was viewed as the religious one, but looking back at it, I wasn't really practicing. It was more like I believed in it, but I didn't really carry out the prayers. Like I prayed, but it wasn't regular. I, you know, and then when I had that turning point, that realization that nothing matters except my relationship to Allah, because that's the only thing that's going to take me out of my dark places. That's the only thing that's going to matter at the end of the day. When I had that turning point, everything changed because I started practicing and my friend group and my friend group started shifting as well. I realized I started having, maybe it's the blessing of Allah, maybe, I don't know what it was. I also made dua about it because I used to beg Allah, Ya Allah, send me righteous friends. That's why I'm, I always say like, you guys are literally like the answer to my dua because I literally make, I made dua about this. I'm going to cry, but... <laughs> um, Oh my god! <laughs> Wait, because I also made so much dar to have righteous friends be sent my way, and well, I like I genuinely get it. Like I understand because when you you see yourself and who you can be with people with who you align, and you see how much peace it brings you, you're like Subhanallah! Like surely this is a blessing of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. You're living in the answer to your dua. Yeah. So I guess like my turning point was also at one of my darkest times, and I felt like. Having good friends is what what's going to take me out of it. <laughs> um, so I'm very, very thankful. So again, I don't know what it was. If it was my dad, if it was just me actually taking my deen seriously and starting practicing. 
but that's when I started realizing that I had the ch that I had this shift, and I as you said, I started actually like choosing my friends and not just letting them come to me, um, and it literally made a lot of difference in my life and in the ways I would spend my time. Cause you know, like this hadith of like you should spend your time. Um, two things you should spend wisely your time and your health yeah. and I felt like both of them are connected with your friends because as you said before um, we, okay so we, you touched on this before we started but um, we talked about this once that you spend most of the time when you're in school with your friends and it's not with your family it's not with your sisters not none of that what you everything you're saying I resonate very much with um and subhanAllah, like, when you see the difference in yourself. So I genuinely felt like I found fulfilling friendships after I moved from France to the UK, to Manchester. I actually, when I started university, I moved to Paris from um, my little town. I moved from my little town to Paris to start university. And I had very high expectations as to friendships. Um, and I thought... I thought maybe this is a place where I'm going to find a fulfilling friendship like I imagine it. And I actually didn't. Um, and I was very disappointed in the people that I was studying with. And, you know, it, it wasn't like the, the the cohort that I was with, it wasn't the people that I would have wanted to hang out with at all. And I actually didn't make any lasting friendships from university. I had a few friends that I knew from high school that were around, but not new friendships that blossomed or anything. And then I moved to Manchester and subhanAllah, that's like... I saw genuinely the shift in myself and in my own serenity as well, because you see how much, it, you feel how much it changes you when you're spending your time the way you actually want to spend it with people you do want to spend it with, who have the same objectives as you and who have the same care for you as you do for them. And that is such a massive game changer because you see your whole life in a, an entirely different perspective. It's like day and night. It's, it's genuinely, it changes your life around. So for me, I feel like we've been talking a, a lot about how we had relationships with like, un, with like uh, non-Muslims. But what I really wanted to touch upon is also how like the Muslims we have around us as well. Because not every Muslim is practicing and not every Muslim has the same mm. view as we do or it gives us the space that we need to actually grow, as you said before. So it's genuinely when you put Allah first and when you put that need to be close to Him first, that's when you realize that you should... That's, that's when you have the criteria to pick your friends carefully and what to choose between all of the people around you. Because... I don't know, I've been surrounded by people where I was like, listen, you call yourself Muslim, but let's be serious, your culture is your number pri number one priority. Mm -hmm. Your culture is not your number one priority and you don't really understand what you're practicing. And when you see that, you're like, I don't want to be impacted by that. Because, mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know, um, I've heard this in a lecture before, which is, you're not as strong as you are when it comes to friendships, like, you are going to be impacted whether you want it or not. And those people who understand religion in that way, they're gonna impact you if you keep yourself surrounded by them. I'm not saying you should cut off those people, but I'm just saying you have to be careful of what you let in and what, you know, like, you know, how do I put it? Word it. <laughs> You just have to be careful of like who you spend your conscious time with who do you who do you give your time with you know some people you can hang around university with and they're just there and you know they're I guess more of acquaintances than friends because mm -hmm. I feel like we call everybody a friend who's around us but that's not true like genuinely your friends should be counted on your fingers that's what a friend is in my opinion but um you know who you're gonna give your time with consciously that's how you, that's you should literally just choose that very very carefully you know this ties a lot with what we were talking about like intentions and stuff um and i feel like it's actually like talking about this as a reminder to myself even that even with friendships you know you need to think about intention and need to think about like literally like what you were saying like bringing you closer to allah and and i feel like as well there's a reason that 
our religion puts so much importance on the value of good company and those around you like that that exists for a reason um in the way that like if you read the quran like there's certain surahs which talk about um close friends the value of close friends versus those who are not righteous towards each other those who are not righteous as characters i guess um so like as allah says in the quran um in a dhukruf which means close friends will be enemies to one another on that day except the righteous there's a reason that that is in the quran and i don't think you can be you have to be muslim to see the value in that that your friends who are righteous sincerely like they will bring you closer to Allah, but not also in your practice, but also in your character as well. Because I think akhlaq is something that we neglect a lot. It's not just about having Muslim company. It's about having friends that you choose. Uh, it's about having friends that you choose who have good characteristics. So those that, you know, you're talking about culture and religion. Friends that understand the difference between them yeah. and the balance between that is also something, you know, you need to discriminate against, like with, you need to value and you need to be able to choose that. Um, but I guess it is very easy to say that now that we're in university, we have a lot more options and avenues to pursue in terms of friendships and opportunities yeah. versus things like high school and college where you don't really have that. So you mentioned the verse in the Quran about having righteous friends and how important that is. That binds well together with how important righteous friends are because I remember this um I remember hearing the story of like when you're on the Sirat and you've literally you've you have all the other hard stations behind you, like you have the the scale behind you, you have the day of judgment behind you, and you literally like on the Sirat, Jannah is in front of you, but that that even that is still a test, like you can still fall. And I remember the Sheikh telling us in that moment, if a friend, if a righteous friend is in front of you, he's going to look back and he's going to say, where is my friend, this and that. We used to do this and this for the sake of Allah. And if he's in front of you, almost there for Jannah, or if he's almost like in Jannah already, he's going to look back and he's going to look for you. That's why I always say to my friends, I always tell you guys, like, when you're in Jannah, please look for me. Like, I, that's why I want to struggle towards the sake of Allah with my friends because I know at the end of the day those are the people who are going to actually search for you and subhanallah how it's not even your parents it's not even you know the family you have that's going to do that for you it's going to be the righteous friends you have and at the same time Allah talks so much in the Quran about that having a bad friend is one of the most it's one of the biggest regrets a person is going to have during the day of judgment Allah says in Surah Al-Furqan, verse 28 to 29, لم أتخذ فلانا خليلا Woe to me, I wish I had never taken so-and-so as a close friend. لقد أضلني عن الذكر بعد إذ جاءني وكان الشيطان للإنسان خذولا It was he who truly made me astray from the reminder after it had reached me, and Satan has always betrayed humanity. This verse refers to as taking shaitan as a khalil so shaking, taking shaitan close to you but that can also mean taking a bad person close to you and taking a person who follows shaitan as a friend that's how shaitan can come to you as well it doesn't have to be him directly harming you or you know whispering to you it can be through a person who's gonna lead you astray so you have to be so careful because Imagine on the most dreadful day, on the most horrible day, that's what you're going to think of. And if Allah is telling us this in the Qur'an, if Allah is telling us this in the Qur'an, this has to have a purpose. Like, we have to make something out of it. This is a warning from Allah. Allah is giving us a hint on what we should do and what we should avoid. So if we don't take his warning seriously, we're going to suffer at the end of the day. Like, it's, at the end, it's always nafsi, nafsi. You're going to be at the end of the day... On the day of judgment, it's gonna it's gonna be you alone, and you're ha you're gonna have to justify everything for Allah. And what's gonna be your justification? I couldn't let go of this friend because oh, we love to hang out, or like oh my God, we always do fun stuff together. That's not gonna be a good enough justification for Allah. And when we're talking about the day of judgment, that's not gonna be enough. And I feel like a lot of people have to bring that forward and 
think about it consciously when they're thinking of the friends they have. And Rasulullah also said that man is influenced by the face of his man is influenced by the faith of his friends. Therefore, be careful of whom you befriend. And he's saying that for us as a, for a purpose as well, because he knows how important that is and how much of an impact righteous friends or bad friends can have on us and what that also means in the terms of the Akhirah. You know, everything you mentioned um, made me think of two separate things that are both on the good side and the bad side of friendship. Um, on the day of judgment when, I think this is a hadith, uh, but I'm not sure we should check, um, but when the believers will enter Jannah and when um, they will discover all of the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has reserved for them in paradise for eternity, they will look for their loved ones and their families and their friends as well. And when a righteous believer who has entered Jannah will realize that he's not finding one of his close friends that he loved endlessly in dunya, um, in this world, he will ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say, Allah, my happiness isn't complete until this person is with me in Jannah. And these are some of the believers or the Muslims that may Allah protect us will go to hell first to be purified before getting into Jannah. But this hadith shows you that having righteous friends can save you from hellfire. Mm -hmm. And obviously we should strive to be the righteous friends in this dynamic, but who you, who you surround yourself with can be the difference between hell and paradise. Um, on the other end of the spectrum, um, similarly to the ayahs you mentioned, there's a passage in Surah as safat that is really heart-wrenching. Um, and it also talks about friendship. Um, and it starts at the ayah 51 in Surah Safat. This is on the day of judgment. And one of them will say, I once had a companion in the world who used to ask me, do you actually believe in resurrection? So the conversation goes along and um, this person says, He will then ask, would you care to see his fate? And when he looks at the faith of this friend who is questioning his faith throughout his life, he says his friend in the midst of hellfire. And then he says, He will then say, by Allah, you nearly ruined me. So this, oh is, oh this is the testimony that Allah is telling us this will happen on the day of judgment, that people will realize there were maybe one step away from being in hellfire mm -hmm. with the friend that was questioning their faith. And one step away is a close, like what's the word? Like a close save? Yeah. One a step, near miss. A near miss. <laughs> it's one step away is a really near miss. And we don't want to be namely missing hellfire. That's yeah. not the objective, is it? I think that's a really, really, really important thing to also think about in the context of you know modern day as well like it's not just um something to think about in general I think a lot of young people nowadays I mean this could just be us being old and <laughs> worrying about the younger You're generation then, no? <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like I feel like I I don't know we, we worry about you know younger siblings and like young people especially those in high school because they're going through the days that we went through where they're sometimes, you know, you face, and when you're growing up, it's right, I'm not wording this. There's a lot of like young people, we worry about siblings and people growing up nowadays in the Western world where they are questioned a lot about being Muslim. And you can argue whether it's harder now, or whether it was harder a few years ago, I think it is up for discussion and debate, but the key point being, you know, young people are being questioned about their faith. Mm -hmm. It's so real. It's not just some foreign concept that existed in the past. It's a very real situation. And I guess I kind of want to say, appeal, I guess, to those who are going through something like that, whether you're young, whether you're old, whether you're surrounded by Muslims or non-Muslims, you know, it's difficult. It is difficult to pull yourself away from those situations because it feels very much like you have that, you have the bad company or nothing. And 
I think it takes a lot of character and strength to realize that actually nothing in these situations is better sometimes as difficult as it is um it is better for your for your akhira you know and even your dunya you know the way you live your life i think it's it is better sometimes to not have that company um yeah everything you said i resonate with absolutely and this is like the one piece of advice i would give to a younger sister to a sister that's the same age or an older sister but whoever is struggling with this like genuinely having gone through so much um islamophobia so much racism throughout my life like as you said being questioned for who i am for my faith for my identity for my values for everything i stand for it's it's unbelievably hard when we are social creatures to find yourself lonely and alone and it's really 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 difficult to get out of a place where you feel like you solely depend on the people that you don't align with to be happy um and there's no sugar coating the fact that it is difficult and that there is no easy way out of it but make dua make dua like the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala listens to you and like honestly from first hand experience make dua for righteous friends and inshallah you will get it um make it with certainty make dua with um full make dua with full faith that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will answer because he will um and it will change your life it really will yeah i think that's what i would also give as advice is in like i would rather not have any friends like okay looking back of course if you're in that situation still you're going to think like what the hell she's talking about because if i heard that in that time when i was struggling to find those good friends i'd be like yeah but that's that doesn't make any sense but wallahi genuinely from the bottom of my heart if i look back that's one thing i would change as in like i would rather have not i would rather have no friends if they're going to be bad for me than having a ton of friends who are all bad for me you know i'd rather have none cuz Allah is going to bring you out of the situation if you're doing it for his sake. And I say that to my sister as she's struggling with this so much right now going to a school with a lot of non-Muslims who are really really influenced by what's going around right now and it's a really hard time for their younger generation and I'm genuinely I'm genuinely concerned. And I say that to her all the time that Make dua, Allah's not gonna leave you alone. And I just want to mention this because that's one of the most powerful um attribute attributes of Allah's name. He's Al Khalil. Mm-hmm. He calls himself the close friend. And if you have that in mind when you're going through a hard time and if you're looking and struggling to have good friends, remember that Allah Himself is calling himself Al Khalil, the close friend who was closer to you than anyone else that should be enough for us that should be enough for us and then at the same time ask him to give you good righteous friends and that dua is going to be so powerful when you're solely relying on him that he's going to answer it for you the answer is going to come and also i think f- good friends come with what you surround yourself with as in okay in school you can choose what you surround yourself with you can choose your classmates but you can choose your extracurriculars you can choose the hobbies you do that kind of stuff so i think that's a very practical tip i also give to my sister <laughs> uh, as in i tell her go to the mosque go like that also depends if you have that option but i tell her go and look for them for those muslim friends because they're not going to come by themselves like you're not going to stay at home and not try and Allah's just going to bring them in, like in front of your doorstep you have to try and make that effort you know and there's so many options to be surrounded by those muslims and of course it is limited it does depend and alhamdulillah it's like a genuinely when you when you look at it it's like it's a blessing mm-hmm. from Allah to be even surrounded by muslims in your city so don't take that for granted and never think that Allah's going to abandon you You said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls himself Al-Khalil the close friend 
But one of the things that I also learned throughout this hard journey, and I know it's easy to say when you're out of the situation and when you're out of the hardship, but generally with hardship comes ease. We all we all know this. Mm-hmm. Um, but the Quran is also your best friend. Like mm-hmm. Farah said this the first episode, but befriend the Quran. The Quran is your link between you and your Lord. Read it. Allah is talking to you. And it's it's um the Quran is the one friend that will never leave you in this dunya. It will always be there for you. Um it's the letters of your Lord to you, right? Um it's a correspondence. It's it's as if you would speak to a friend through messages or through letters as they used to do. But um it's a correspondence directly with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and use the Quran to try and fulfill that emptiness that you will feel when you don't find those fulfilling relationships around you. Um, um, and like subhanAllah, yeah, Quran, but also dua, you know, like, I don't know, me personally, I find that a really useful as well as Quran, you know, even if you're struggling, even if you're not struggling, dua is so important in fulfilling yourself because that enriches your connection to Allah and you know, if you're feeling lonely, you're feeling all these emotions, you're feeling conflicted, I think it's easy to underestimate the value of du'a and just talking to Allah about it sincerely. You might feel odd in the beginning if it's your first time, you know, literally just talking to Allah as a friend, but like he says, sorry, you might feel a bit odd speaking to him in that way for the first time if you've never done that before, but there's a reason he refers to himself as you know, our Khalil, you know, our close friend. Um, and you also talked to um, something really interesting, Tasneem, that reminded me that in those situations where you have, you know, friends of convenience and things like that, you really do not feel fulfilled. And it's temporary, like you have companionship during school. But when you go home, I think if you're really honest with yourself in those bad friendships or maybe the ones that aren't necessarily you know righteous friends or good company where you're learning and developing yourself if you're really honest with yourself it's not fulfilling you will still feel incredibly lonely and especially in those friendships where you cannot be yourself where you cannot be honest as a muslim you cannot develop yourself as a muslim you cannot develop your character you cannot truly be yourself and you know develop that understanding in those friendships you don't feel fulfilled. You will always, always feel lonely. You will go back home. You might have fun the whole day and you'll come back home and you'll feel this pit of emptiness and loneliness. And that's because you're not being fulfilled. You you don't have good company around you. This is all just temporary. It's almost like an illusion. It's an illusion of the dunya, you know? I think what's something, maybe this is a bit off topic, but what's something I wish someone told me when I was younger was maybe also, it's also because I felt very unfulfilled by the friendships I had. But it's also that I think I also gave the friendships way too much time and I even put them above family at some point. And um, it's something I really regret because that time, maybe it's like the teenager hormones, I don't know <laughs> what it was. But it was just like, yeah, my family's so not cool. And just like me trying to, you know, be away from my family as much as possible. But I wish I took that time to actually understand my family and spend time with them and build that bond. Um, Alhamdulillah, I was able to do it now. But I still, I, I don't like regretting stuff. I was, so I wouldn't say I regret it. But I would, like, <laughs> I still wish I used that time differently. I loved spending time with my friends when I when it really didn't bring me any benefit and as harsh as that sounds friendships should benefit you as you said before it is give and take and if you don't see any benefit in those friendships if it's just fun and going out and we're doing this and that there's no use of having that friend like if you cut off that friend and you don't feel any emptiness in your heart then that friend didn't have any purpose in your life so I felt like while growing up, and that was like the middle school, high school period, I didn't have any of those fulfilling friendships, but at the same time, I put way too much, I gave up way, 
I, I gave up way too much of my time for those unfulfilling friendships as well, as I didn't realize how much consumed of my time, I also gave up important things such as family. And I don't know, we, yes, friendships are important and we are trying to highlight that here in this episode, but at the same time, that can go in a way that people start neglecting their families. So I just want to mention that you have to still be careful because friendships come and go, but your family is always there. And yes, friends, friendships can be a way of us fleeing our hardships because families bring hardships as well. You have, you get tested through your family and friendships are there to support you, but you should still try to build that relationship, especially when you're younger. Um, and I think a lot of teenagers try to flee from that. I think when what's important is that you realize that you need to strike a balance. It's not either or, it's not black and white, it's not 0% or 100%. It's not either I have the most righteous friends ever and they are, you know, the perfect match for me and they do everything like I would like my friends to be. Um, you know, it, it's you have to work with what you have. And if your environment doesn't allow you to strive for something like that, as we said, make dua and work with what you have. Um, There's people that will be friends, not not close friends or not complete strangers, but, you know, somewhere in the middle. And they might not have the same objectives as you and they might not have the same values as you or lifestyle as you, but they might still support you through hard times or they might still be there for you. And same, um, and you might... And you might be there for them. Um, it, it's not about it's not about looking for perfection. It's about working with what you have and always striving for the better. Obviously, through du'a and, and through um, your worship uh, for Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Don't be disheartened if you don't have the friends that you wish you had now. Um, Allah might put them in. Allah might put them in your life at a later time, and that's going to be the best time that you will have them. Um, so it's all about balance and making sure that your boundaries are respected because there might be some things that the friends you have right now you don't agree with and you might be doing things that they don't agree with but that doesn't mean you can't know them at all or you can't talk to them if that's all you have around you but it's about being firm with your beliefs with your boundaries and making sure that you strengthen yourself in that sense and obviously we're not we're very malleable as human beings. We will be influenced, but it's for, it's important for you to be aware of that possibility of influence and that that is a source of influence as well. Um, so even if, because I know there's points in our lives where friendships is all there is in our lives. That's, that's, you know, that's our entire world. That's everything that we have. And if we don't have it, it might seem like our life is the worst and that you know, um, I'm, I'm, I'm completely unhappy, I'm in despair, but you can still have companionship, even if it's not the, you know, having a Khalil, a close friend that you will have for a long, long, long time in your life. So it's about striking a balance and making sure your boundaries are respected as well. And always make dua for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to put righteous people in your way, because he will, um, by his will. So to close off, maybe some closing remarks. <laughs> um, I think we've talked about a lot. Um, there's some points that I wish we could elaborate more on it, but honestly, we could talk for literally years. Um, but I guess when I think about closing remarks, it's I guess I use this as my advice. Um, I think for those who may find they're surrounded by people that, you know, maybe necessarily you think might not be the best company, it's about taking things in baby steps, you know, like Tasneem talked about it. There is a place, there is a balance of where those people's, where those people, where those people, there is a balance where those people fall in your lives, the role that they play. If you find there's someone who, you know, maybe they're not the best character, they're not someone you want to surround yourself with, they don't bring you closer to Allah, don't be super dramatic about it. You don't have to like cut them off, block them, do this or the other. It doesn't have to be that extreme. You know, take baby steps. Get a little bit of distance from yourself and them um, without being rude to them because also it's important that you treat other people respectfully, whether you agree with them, whether they're, you know, you disagree with them. 
take it kindly, slowly, baby steps, and I guess kind of reflect on what is important to you and what you get from a friendship, I guess. Um, Yeah. I think my closing remarks would be that um, I used to think that friendship happens randomly, but now I've learned that you choose who you want to be friends with, and how you do that is by looking at the characteristics of those people you're surrounded with and asking yourself if you'd want to be like them. You're the average of your five close friends. So yeah, if you like if you look at the people who are surrounding you, you're the average of those people and the people we spend our time with influence us to uh to an impact that we really underestimate. So choose your friends carefully and make a lot of dua. You don't want to be of those people on the Day of Judgment that are regretting taking this and that friend um, as a close friend. What I would say to my younger self when I was really struggling with friendships and relationships in general, um, I didn't find my share of what I was looking for. Um, I didn't have people who I felt were supporting me in the way that I wish I was supported. And I just didn't have the fulfilling relationships that I wish I had. Um, it does get better. It really does. Um, you should trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he is putting you through hardship for a reason. And you need to go through what you're going through to build yourself up, um, even if it's from the ground or below. Because if you don't go through um, these hard times, you might not know the sweetness of the blessings you will be awarded. Oh, Barakallahu feekum all for the really good advice you gave. And I hope a lot of people can benefit from what we're saying. Whatever good we said, it's from Allah. And whatever bad we said, it's from us and shaitan. Um, I'm going to close, inshallah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر. Thank you so much for tuning in and we'll see you in the next episode إن شاء الله. السلام عليكم. السلام عليكم. السلام عليكم. <تصفيق> 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 <تصفيق>